to the scared white woman on the elevator. Avoiding eye contact, you retreat to the opposite corner, waiting for the doors to close. Ding! Waiting for the fear monger's rhetoric to display distorted media images of a phantom boogeyman. Ding! Waiting for disproportionate statistics to come crawling out of the shallow grave of a racial stereotype. Ding! Waiting for the excruciating moments between white guilt and the second floor. Tell me, does a white knuckle grip on purse straps help you cling to the public image you project at dinner parties? As convenient cocktail conversations provide the perfect stage to debut a broken heart on your sleeve while you faithfully recite the monologue of moral outrage over social injustice, because in reality, the rapidly racing heartbeats raging against your ribcage betrays you. I guess they never covered this scenario in cultural sensitivity class. And now that the shit just got real, tell me, is this the same panic you feel when you cross to the other side of the street when we reach the corner of walk, don't walk? Ding! Is this the same panic you feel when hypervigilance forces you to hover over your pen number like a convicted felon protecting his meal at dinner time? <laughs> Ding! Is this the same panic you feel when your trick hammer pulse rate, which rises with every passing floor, cannot overcome the sickening notion that you may be a racist? And if you think I'm being too harsh, Maybe you're right. Because subliminal racism is not the only dynamic we have to consider. Ding! My anger, however justified, does not negate the fact that I'm a complete stranger. Ding! Your fear, however insulting, does not negate the fact that women cannot afford to let the tsk of a guilty conscience prevent them from getting home safe. Ding! And if both points are valid, then we have ourselves a conundrum. And here's where it gets tricky. We're the only animals on the face of the planet that allow ourselves to be confined in a metal box with another animal we do not know. <laughs> and after millions and millions of years, evolution does not see fit to give you anywhere near the strength of a lion or the speed of a cheetah, but that knot in the pit of your stomach is Darwin telling you, do not let your head get in the way of your head. <laughs> so, to the scared white woman on the elevator, this poem is not a condemnation, but a re-examination of the facts, because it's hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your head, and the psychological warfare in which we are engaged has been waged by generals long since dead. But remember, together, we started out on the ground floor, and together, we are ascending into the angels of our better nature. Mm -hmm. And we may be two animals trapped in the lab, in the lab page of a, a, a social experiment, but I am desperately trying to find our way out of the maze with both of our dignities intact.